Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of your questions answered and in last week's episode I answered another question from one of our readers and the question last week was my 39 year old brother had a TBI now he's back to intensive care with hydrocephalus and he needs a VP shunt is this the best option you can check out the answer to last week's question by clicking on the link below this video in this week's episode of your questions answered I want to answer another more general question from our readers that I get all the time and the question this week is why would a critically ill patient in an induced coma need a tracheostomy in intensive care so today is an answer to a more general question that I get all the time and I want to shed more light on this today most families of critically ill patients in intensive care coming to our website come because their loved one isn't waking up after an induced coma they want to simply know when is my loved one going to wake up after the induced coma often there is no one size fits all answer to this question and then families in intensive care realize that if their critically ill loved one isn't waking up in a time frame that they expect that they may need a tracheostomy that's basically what this episode of your questions answer today is all about so if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care and they are in an induced coma they will also be mechanically ventilated with a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube there is no such thing as an induced coma without mechanical ventilation and a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube the same is true for mechanical ventilation with a breathing tube or endotracheal tube it just doesn't happen without an induced coma therefore one goes with the other mechanical ventilation with a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube is just too uncomfortable to tolerate therefore an induced coma is the only way for a critically ill patient to tolerate mechanical ventilation with a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube imagine somebody putting a tube down your throat and starts ventilating your lungs with lots of pressure and flow you couldn't cope therefore an induced coma is the only way to safely ventilate a critically ill patient in intensive care also keep in mind that starting to ventilate a critically ill patient with a ventilator and a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube is preceded by a critical illness where some major bodily functions such as the heart the lungs the liver the brain and or the kidneys are unable to function 100 percent hence the induction into a coma and the mechanical ventilation with a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube other conditions such as major trauma or heavy blood loss may also lead to an induced coma and mechanical ventilation with a breathing tube or endotracheal tube as well therefore the critical illness of your loved one is often only the starting point for your loved one's induced coma and the mechanical ventilation with the breathing tube or the endotracheal tube for more information about why your critically ill loved one needs an induced coma and what an induced coma exactly is check out another article and video that I that I did about this topic what is an induced coma and why does your critically ill loved one need an induced coma so I put a link to this article and video below this video in the written version of this blog so today and in this episode of your questions answered I just want to focus on why your critically ill loved one may need a tracheostomy when they are in an induced coma in case you are new to this blog and video series you may wonder what makes me qualified to talk about this subject 
in more than 15 years intensive care nursing in three different countries I have seen over and over again that critically ill patients go from an induced coma to a tracheostomy. During those more than 15 years in intensive care I have literally worked with thousands of critically ill patients and their families. I have also worked for more than five years as a nurse unit manager in intensive care and I have gathered tons of insights into the world that is intensive care. So when critically ill patients in intensive care are in an induced coma it often comes with undesired side effects such as the mechanical ventilation with the breathing tube or an endotracheal tube. An induced coma also comes with medications such as propofol which is also known as diprovan or midazolam which is also known as Verst, or fentanyl and morphine and those are all the drugs given usually in an induced coma. Propofol or diprovan, midazolam or Verst, fentanyl or morphine are the most commonly used sedative and opiate which is painkiller drugs in an induced coma. Other drugs that can be used for an induced coma are ketamine, Presidex, phenobarbital mainly for head and brain injuries and seizures, oxycodone and remifentanil but they are less commonly used. In some instances muscle relaxant substances such as rocuronium, vecuronium, cisatrocurium or saxamethonium, just to name a few, are given in case a critically ill patient can't be ventilated during the induced coma. Those drugs completely paralyze a critically ill patient and it should only be done temporarily and it should only be done as a last resort or at the beginning of an induced coma as it completely paralyzes a critically ill patient. In some instances muscle relaxant substances are also given if a critically ill patient is too unstable in order to minimize bodily functions and any resistance in order to maximize blood flow to major organs such as the liver, the kidneys, the heart, the lungs and the brain. If any of those substances like propofol, midazolam, fentanyl, morphine and or the muscle relaxant substances are given for a prolonged period of time there is a chance that your critically ill loved one will stay in an induced coma for longer than anticipated. It's always difficult to say at the beginning of an induced coma how long the induced coma and the mechanical ventilation with the breathing tube or the endotracheal tube is needed for. However the more sedative drugs such as propofol or midazolam, the more opiate drugs such as fentanyl or morphine and the more muscle relaxant medications are given the higher the chance that the induced coma and the mechanical ventilation with the breathing tube or the endotracheal tube will be needed for at least a few days or sometimes even many weeks. On top of that if the nature of the critical illness for your loved one requires them to be in an induced coma and therefore requiring mechanical ventilation with a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube for prolonged periods, days or even weeks, again there is a much higher risk for not waking up quickly after the induced coma. Therefore the combination of a prolonged induced coma with prolonged mechanical ventilation often triggers the consideration for a tracheostomy instead of a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube. Clinical situations such as severe head and brain injuries, ARDS or lung failure, major trauma, Guillain-Barre syndrome, cardiac arrest, ECMO for heart and or lung failure, lung transplants, COPD, asthma, just to name a few are all clinical situations that may require a tracheostomy during an induced coma. The reasons for performing a tracheostomy in an induced coma are manifold and can't be reduced to simply one reason. The main reasons for a tracheostomy in an induced coma are 
minimization or even exclusion of sedative and opiate or painkiller drugs such as propofol, midazolam, fentanyl and or morphine. Some of those drugs all have undesired side effects such as being addictive and therefore minimizing or even excluding those side effects is often crucial during the recovery of a critically ill patient. The longer critically ill patients in intensive care are on medications such as propofol, midazolam, fentanyl or morphine, the higher the chances are that your critically ill loved one becomes addicted to these drugs. Therefore, a withdrawal from these drugs can also become an issue when your critically ill loved one is being woken up after the induced coma. The quicker your loved one gets off these addictive drugs, the better it is. Therefore, a tracheostomy and then a minimization or even an exclusion from these addictive drugs is more than desirable. Being in an induced coma and battling a critical illness presents a multitude of challenges already and therefore your critically ill loved one doesn't need another one of those challenges by withdrawing from addictive drugs. Next, a tracheostomy unlike a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube is much easier to tolerate and it's almost painless. Therefore sedative and opiate or painkiller drugs such as propofol, midazolam, fentanyl or morphine can often be seized immediately after the tracheostomy has been performed and therefore waking up after an induced coma can often be started immediately after the tracheostomy has been done. Next, depending on the nature of the critical illness, sometimes waking up and weaning off sedative and opiate drugs can't be commenced straight away as sometimes critical conditions require sedation and opiate or painkiller drugs. However, usually a tracheostomy is leading to a reduction of sedative and opiate or painkiller drugs within hours. Again, a tracheostomy is a tube inserted into the windpipe or trachea, whereas a breathing tube or the endotracheal tube is inserted through the mouth. A tracheostomy is therefore so much easier to tolerate. Next, once a tracheostomy is inserted and your critically ill loved one is more awake, your loved one can be weaned off the ventilator gradually by having time on and off the ventilator. This approach can't be done with a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube. Next, many Many critically ill patients in intensive care are not waking up quickly after the induced coma. Therefore, a tracheostomy is giving them more time to wake up in their own time whilst having sedation and opiate or painkiller drugs minimized. So, they are the main reasons why a critically ill patient in an induced coma might need a tracheostomy in intensive care. I have done several more other related articles and videos for you to get more information about induced coma, breathing tube, endotracheal tube and tracheostomy. So I put links to all of those articles and videos below this video in the written version of this blog. So check them out and click on the links. So how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one? Make informed decisions, get peace of mind control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You get to that all-important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. 
sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind-the-scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions or you can call me, find international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also, check out our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos and audio recordings and where you can also get one-on-one -on -one counseling and consulting with me over the phone via Skype or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.